You know why this job's extra hard? Because we have to capture all these experiences on the econ. That's why it's extra hard. Okay, oh. Very proud of you. Beautiful. All that work yesterday paid off. She bought it a little bit there for a second. I know, I saw. So, yeah, the inference, the knowledge is there of what I want her to do. I don't want her to relax, put her chin down and breathe out her nose, which will regulate. It'll regulate her breathing and then calm her down. Right? Like, <laughs> that's bad. Right? Because this is a dog who lives in a living room. She's five, right? She doesn't have a life outside the living room. She comes outside of her living room and she's like, what is this? The world. What is all this stuff? What are consequences, you know? Who's a leader? What's that? Somebody correcting me for things that don't, they don't like me doing as simple as going and checking out something in that room, you know? So then you see stress. So then I'm teaching her the coping skill, which is to relax and breathe through the nose. Now she'll learn to breathe through the nose without having to do this eventually, but breathing through the nose is key. You notice that dog's breathing through the nose, that dog's breathing through the nose, that dog's breathing through the nose, because the they're not stressed. She's stressed, but if I tell her to, do this, now she's calmer and this feels better in her mind, but the thing is, is that her patterning in her brain, that's what it is, so she can only stay there for so long. So I'm teaching her to self-regulate, I'm teaching her to, when you start to hear yourself, and you start to feel the anxiety, then put your stuff head down and breathe through your nose and you'll feel better. And that's my expectation for you as well when you're around me, because nobody wants you to be doing that while you just sit there next to us, right? And that's because she's out of her comfort zone, right? You see a lot of dogs do this when you tell them to stay for the first time, and they're used to being able to choose any behavior at any time. They start to stress, they start to shake, because they have to hold still, right? That's what this is. So interrupt that cycle that she likes to hop on in her mind. Interrupt it, correct it, and then the one that I taught her, which is the calm and submissive state of mind. Now she's got to learn to stay. My goal is that she's, that's where she is normally. And then she, she, you know, every now and then if something spooks her, they leave it. But I want her to be able to carry this balanced state um, regularly, you know? So, and you use this skill when she feels stressed to calm herself down. That's what we teach all the dogs. So we got to teach these guys him and all the dogs in there. So, see, this is good. Now she's going to shake. This is more healthy because she's going through it. She feels so much better, just it's like softer on the on the body. But she's not all the way there yet. She's got more to do. Yeah, that's my girl. Here's the interesting thing, though. This is a, this is something that I'm holding her accountable for, right? Eventually, she's going to be doing it on her own because she sees the benefit in it. She'll start to trigger into a stressful state, and that'll tell her to put herself here. Because her belief system that is, if she doesn't do that, if she doesn't calm down, I'm going to correct her. And she's right. So therefore, she self-regulates operating underneath my rules. Right? So I don't have to hound her eventually. I'm not going to have to be like, down, down, relax. Down. She's going to do it herself, and I'm just going to correct her when she's not uh, managing herself. Okay? Because she knows the skill. She'll know the skill to do, which that's the skill. Okay? That's the skill. Breathing through the nose helps a dog who's stressed. Now, that's why it's nice and cool in here. Nobody's hot. It's not, it's not hot at all. Everybody's in a nice, comfortable temperature, so there's no panting from hotness. That wouldn't be fair. But this is going to teach her from, to go from stress to calm her brain. You see her doing it right now, right? But look at her getting, going back to that old way of thinking. It's only a matter of time before that mouth opens up. And, and then when she starts with that heavy panting, it's nothing but stress cycle in her head that we can snap her out of, disagree with, punish. Her if she doesn't try to calm down. That's how we hold it. That's how we hold her accountable. We snap her out of it. She does that. There's no punishment. If we snap her out of it and she doesn't listen, then I correct her, and then she goes and does this. And that's how she's being held accountable to self-regulate. Okay. Otherwise, this dog will. Sit, this is what this dog will do. She will sit on that bed after reluctantly doing anything and going on, and she will pant as heavy as you've ever seen a dog pant. And she would drool until there's a pool of drool, right? Because what's happening is she's just stressing, 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 stressing.
stress and stress and stress and stress and don't know how to get out. Stress and stress and stress. Because her only comforts are like her couch, her people and that. You know, she doesn't have the coping skills a five-year-old dog should have to be able to walk through the world and not have that happen, right? Okay. Now she's reset. That was my interruption. I gave her a small number and a verbal. Now if she doesn't listen to that, then I punish. Right? She doesn't, but she did, she, she regulated, she breathed through the nose. So this is what's gonna help her, okay? And then she's gonna be able to look at the world in a much calmer way. And then we can actually teach her you know, how to feel about things and uh, what to do in certain situations and all that. So it's rehab work, really, with a dog like this. Um, there you go, she's learning. She's learning the trick. Riggins is doing it. You can hear. The only breath I hear in this room is hers. Because she... Right? And Riggins is breathing out his nose. You don't hear a thing. That's what she'll get to eventually. Now when Riggins is stressed, let's say I can grab a big old piece of meat and he's starving. And I put it right in front of him and I say, no, don't touch that food and he really wants that food, he's gonna start stressing out, shaking, maybe even panting, you know, because he wants that food. That's what's happening with a dog like this. It's not something in particular all the time that she wants. It's just she wants the freedom to choose, right? She, 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 she thinks, I wanna step off the bed, I can't step off the bed. I wanna go over there, I can't go over there. I wanna go to my kennel, I can't go over there. I wanna step off the bed, I can't step off the bed. I wanna go over there, I can't go over there. I wanna go to my kennel, I can't go over there. You know what I mean? It's just not used to following a human's direction where we say, wait right there and don't worry about anything, that doesn't happen. So that's why we're seeing it, because she's five, so she's gotta go through rehab now, because she doesn't have basic, um, you know, like year, year and a half skills. When she was that young, that's when they, they should have it developed by the time they're, they're an adult, right? My young lady does not have that. She does not have impulse control, meaning she sees something she wants, she goes. She doesn't stop and think, should I do this? Or what would my owner want me to do? She doesn't do that. So she's going to have to learn to do that. You can't just see something and react anymore, right? Because now you have a leader. And if you do that, you get punished. Because the leader is allowed to, has to is, should have the privilege to decide how to deal with the new thing that you just discovered. Something comes into this room, a person, you know, a dog, food, it doesn't matter. I want to be able to decide how, how to deal with it. So if she goes up on them or any of these dogs go up on them without permission, they're in trouble. These are basic rules. Okay, it keeps a dog in place, in their mind, on the hierarchy. New things doesn't mean you get them first, it means I get them first. And if you look at me and I say, okay, you can go up on it, then you can. But if you look at me and I say no, that means you can't. So the important part thing, the important part is, is that you're stopping your impulse and you're looking at me for guidance, and then I can say yes or no. What happens when the dog doesn't do that is they see the thing and they just go. Okay? She's getting, that's it, that's the skill. That's all she needs to learn for now. This is gonna help her like tremendously when she's stressed. If a down is available for her, which she can lay down anywhere, um, you know, as long as it's not uncomfortable and cold, because pitties do not like cold grounds. <laughs> they will, she can lay down and settle the mind. Now what will happen is she'll use this over and over again, but then she'll also eventually, without even knowing it, have her head picked up and still be calm and still be breathing through the nose and not be stressing, and that's totally fine. I want her to evolve to the stage where she knows how to calm down without using the training wheel, but if she needs that, she needs that. And some dogs use this forever, you know what I mean? They know that that's the way to calm down and they know that calming down uh, is, all that I'm ever asking for from them. After I correct them, I'm always looking for them to calm down, okay? So learning to do that is half the battle. And I feel like she's doing a very good job. She's very stubborn, she's insecure, she's underdeveloped and inexperienced in the world. Um, uh, so, so, you know, it's work, it's a lot of work. It's, it's, it's definitely rehab for her. What are we on, day three, four? What are we on? I don't remember. It's like day four, isn't it? Today is the start of day four. Today is the start of day four, okay. So I would say, you know, you know, seven to nine days, seven to 10 days from now, we should probably see a much better head on her. So a five-year-old, you know, I think that it was geared towards she's, she's a bad puller on the walk, 
right? This is what we see, and this is this is something worth mentioning. Is that people talk? They they emphasize the symptoms, of uh, and they tell us, you know, like gosh, they pull, they jump, they bark, you know. This doesn't equal rehab, right? But what what they don't see because she's always living in the living room and never really put in a situation in a real situation, you know, like real life where where she's gonna get corrected if she does something that that one of these dogs out of like fifteen dogs out there and myself doesn't like. She doesn't know what to do in that situation, and she's five, right? That makes it work. That makes it work for, for me and for her and for everybody involved because it took so, because we're, we waited so long to get it done. It's not the walk that's the problem; it's her mind. She doesn't know how to follow a human. All right. Um, to make it simple, uh, she's she's only struggling with two things: doing what you say and stop doing what you tell her to stop doing. That's it. Plug whatever in, in you want. Okay. She's poles. Okay. She's not healing when you tell her to, or she's not not pulling when you tell her to stop. Um, what else does she do? She nails. Does, she, does, she doesn't let you do your nails, okay? So that's her not doing what she's told. They, they're either not stopping what you're telling them to stop, they're not doing what you're telling them to do. That means they don't listen. That means they're not a follower. That means they haven't submitted to your leadership. That's really what that means. If we can get those things done, then the commands, they're nothing. They're just... They just, it's just like a common language between me and the dog where I say heal and the dog knows what that means and I know the rules and consequences that are attached to that particular sound. They understand that, that but that doesn't mean they're gonna listen because they know the command. It's not. So what she's really missing, which a lot, all the dogs that come in here are missing because we got a few dogs that we just had in that have been trained already. They're not here for that. They don't follow a human, period. That's it. You say stop, they don't. You say do, they don't. That's the problem. And that's what we're going after. So when we start taking away free will, and I say, hey, I don't want you walking around in this room right now. A dog like that's like, doesn't know what to do with itself. I don't know what to do with myself. This isn't my room. Where's my couch? Where's my human? Where's my dog that I live with? I don't know this world. And now if I do something wrong, there's consequences. A dog gets that. I'm teaching her now this skill is going to go a long ways, but I'm also teaching her every interaction with her to uh, see me relevant and to learn to listen to me through all these experiences we're giving her. And to see that trying to hear what a human's saying and, and literally ignore it and, and not listen, find out what happens now when you do that. Find out what happens when you don't listen over and over and over again. And then find out what happens when you do listen over and over and over again. Until we change the way the dog views the human. I would like to change the way she views me, you, Julie, everybody. If we ask her to do something, she shouldn't say, what's in it for me? She shouldn't question us. She shouldn't half-ass it. The deal of living with us, any human, a dog living with a human, you get fed, you get loved, you get shelter, you get toys, you get to be part of the family. The trade is, when we say do, do, and when we say don't, don't. That's the deal. You're breaking your part of the bargain, and that's how you ended up here. Because you're not holding up to the, to the unwritten rule of like, just do what your human says. Most dogs don't listen to their humans anyway though. It's just natural. Unless their humans give them meaningful consequences for not listening, they don't listen. That's why there's laws in place for humans. Because we're not going to listen unless there's consequences for doing things that we're not supposed to be doing. Okay? We're just not going to listen. Right? Same with the dogs. She'll be okay. She'll be more than okay. She'll be great. She's stressed. But every day, as soon as she lets go of being independent and decides to follow me, the first human in her whole life she's going to follow to this degree, um, she's going to see the benefits of that and how much easier life is and the benefits of being in a pack and being below me. Um, and the do's and don'ts of that. And then she's going to be very successful. And then we're going to teach the owners and we're going to have a go home session to transfer this leadership over to the humans in her life and we're going to send her home and she's going to have a good life. All right? But it is way more than my dog pulls on the leash. It's way more than my dog won't calm down. It's way more than my dog won't let me do the nails. And I know everybody knows it is. You know, deep down, if you sit down to any logical human, they know that it's not just that it pulls. It's not. It's, it's not, it's, it's, a, it's a hierarchical thing. It's, it's how your dog sees you and views you. 
if your dog respects you to the nth degree, when you say no, they stop. Believe it or not. But you can't have that type of control unless you take it. That's just how dogs, that's just how dogs do. That's why I love them so much because they're, they keep me grounded in reality because they are, um, they are nature. And this is how nature works, okay?